Hey guys, welcome to another Hops and Vines beer reviews. Our good buddy Mark with me again today. Um, today we are going to be doing um, two different beers, one from Omegong, Art of Darkness, and then we're going to be comparing it up to uh, Unibrew uh, Grand Reserve 17. They're both uh, Belgian dark strong ales. Little quick history behind uh, the Unibrew 17. Uh, they brewed this beer in 2007 as their 17th anniversary beer and uh, it went over so well, they started winning all these platinum uh, medals with it. So they rebrewed it in uh, 2011 and uh, put the Grand Reserve label on it. And uh, it's actually, this one is aged in French oak and uh, the Omegong is not aged in French oak and no spices are added in this one. So, uh, but they're two, uh, really good examples of the style. So in this tasting, we're going to pour them both up and we're going to compare and take notes and see what's going on with them. Yeah, so. really interested in this one actually because this one's brewed with spices and Asian oak, but this one has a blend of oats, wheat, and all kinds of different roasted malts to get its complexity. So yeah, be pretty interesting. Yeah, no spices or anything um, with, with this guy. It, it, it's all malt beer. Um, of course, they're using Belgian style yeast on both of these. So yeah, it's going to be be a good comparison here. So we'll uh, we'll get them cracked open. Mm -hmm. Nice pop there. The Art of Darkness definitely has a much deeper uh, mahogany, um, almost almost opaque. Mm -hmm. I would say it's just like a super deep red. There's this Unibrew has got just a beautiful ruby color yeah. to it. Both have the stereotypical tight lacing for Belgian beers. Definitely looks like we got some a little more effervescence going on in mm -hmm. the Unibrew here. Head's definitely bigger. Um, probably have to do a little bit with my pour, but it seems like the head on the, um, the Omegong has dissipated a little bit quicker. I'm getting a lot of nice, like, chocolate, kind of yeah. chocolatey notes. Definitely very smooth, though. Um, not, not picking up any hop character, really. But so, definitely the darker malts and a little bit of, a little bit of almost like weedy spiciness. Mm -hmm. Definitely you can taste the Belgian yeast as that typical a little bit of that banana clove kind of spicy yeast character to it that gives it its traditional Belgian dark strong style. Yeah, definitely spicy. I, but again, I really feel like the, uh, the oats and the wheat are pushing that forward. Um, this one also, it just has a very smooth and soft quality to it. Mm -hmm. There's, there's hardly any alcohol heat to it at all. 8.9%, um, so extremely, extremely uh, well hidden on the alcohol. Good job on that for sure. Um, and just, just goes down smooth, finishes dry. Yeah, that has uh, a hardly any residual sweetness on it. Yeah. Mm. I want to say both these beers are uh, <clears throat> re-fermented uh, re fermented in the bottle, bottle conditioned, which helps it with age. Um, both of these beers are certainly cellar worthy um, and uh, gives it a different kind of creamier uh, mouthfeel and carbonation on it. The more I'm drinking the Omegang, the more I'm picking up um, like a dark fruit, honestly. Mm -hmm. And not just the banana and clove, which you know does contribute to that spiciness we were talking about. It's got this. It's definitely changing as it warms yeah. up. It's almost like a like a slight plum or some some sort of dark fleshy fruit. Plums, yeah, dried prune, yeah. Ra raisin. Um, pretty much on style with the Belgian uh, Belgian dark strong style. I would say um, yeah. for for what they were going for, they definitely, they definitely achieved it. Body and the mouth feel are mm -hmm. absolutely spot on, spectacular in this beer. Mm. I agree. Well, shall we? Mm. Oh. A little bit, a little bit of cinnamon, definitely, definitely clove. The body's much lighter than uh, the Art of Darkness. It's um, still very smooth, but not quite as, not quite as creamy, not quite as uh, right uh, robust. One thing about the, the the Unibrew beers in general, they do have um, a lot of complexity from the from the yeast that they use on them, and, and this. Uh, like Mark said, they're using the same yeast as they are on the, um, you know, the Moudite, um, the Le Fendemon, um, and that's just their house yeast character. Um, it's for a Belgian ale, um, the yeast character is actually fairly clean. Um, the Art of Darkness definitely has more of that typical, what you would 
expect from a Belgian beer with a, a little more banana, banana clove, clove. Uh, spice. The um, Grand Reserve 17 is just very clean for a Belgian. Um, again, nicely done finishes, uh, very dry effervescent mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of plays with the oak a little bit. You're getting some of that uh, French oak barrels in there. That's one of the things that I loved about the French oak. It just adds this earthiness and a very, it's a very soft oak as well. Um, you know, not like those like new American oak or uh, like bourbon barrel aged, um, anything along those right. lines. It's very subtle, integrates very well. I, I agree. I think the more that I'm getting into the aroma, the that almost kind of soapiness, what I'm smelling is actually some of that oak um, flavor coming through. Uh, a lot of these flavors and aromas actually get stuck in the foam on the top of the beer. So you get a nice hit of oak right when it hits your palate. I believe that they do spice this beer. Um, most of uh, Unibrew's uh, beers they do use spices in. Uh, they don't advertise it heavily, but um, they use it just enough where it complements the malt and the hops and not enough where you can really pick out what mm -hmm. spices they're using. But um, yeah, to me, this is kind of telling me there's something besides malt and hops in this beer. Definitely. It's almost like um, a barely detectable slight yeah. cinnamon character. Cinnamon. I know that they're, they use uh, uh, star anise mm -hmm. in a lot of their beers, and that's a, that's a, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm tasting that possibly yeah. a little bit, kind of that licorice um, flavor in there, but very subtle, like I said. And I've had, I've had a, quite a few anise beers and beers brewed with anise before. So it's kind of a fickle uh, spice to work with. It can definitely overpower things very quickly. This is, like I said, very well integrated, very nice. I'm not real sure which one I like better. I, they're, they're both good in their own right, and they're very different, I mean, for both being Belch and Dark Strongs. As the Omegang warms up, it's even getting more of the darker fruit even mm -hmm. now. Tasting again a couple minutes later, it's just really opening up into a really darker malt profile is where the Unibrew 17 is just kind of holding a lighter uh, lighter presence to it all around. A yeah. little more effervescence going on. Um, I mean, this the Grand Reserve is just a beautiful, easy drinker for 10%. Ten. Exactly. So you really, between the two, um, alcohol-wise, they're both, the alcohol is really well hidden in both of them. I can't really detect any hot alcohol in either one of them. Uh, very, they're both very cleanly brewed. Um, the, like I said before, the, um, the, the yeast character, I feel like, comes through a little stronger and the, um, the art of darkness here. Mm -hmm. um, but to my palate, I kind of prefer the, this Grand Reserve. I'm, I'm going to have to go ahead and agree with you there. Um, I don't know if it's the, the time of year because usually drinking with the seasons helps helps you out a little bit. But uh, about about two months ago, when it was nice and cold, this one would have been a great one for me. Um, I gotta gotta say my preference is going to be for this Grand Reserve 17. Um, also, I am a little bit biased. The first beer I, I bought when I turned 21 was a Le Fin du Monde because I've uh, I've always loved Unibrew's uh, style and and profile. Yeah. Um, but it just yeah, it's just a, a both both very seamless, both very well integrated. Um, well done. Unibrew is one of the, the first good beers that I could get when I turned 21 um, before the whole craft beer industry hit the market. These were available when I lived in Florida and um, we used to get these all the time. They actually used to come in six packs and yep. now they only come in fours because of the strength and everything. But Gateway this beers. really got me hooked on Belgian and really, uh, you know, uh, this style of beers. So. Um, both of these are available at Hops and Vines right now. Um, we should have them in stock for the uh, foreseeable future. Um, I know we're getting more of the Grand Reserve tomorrow, and we got a couple cases of the uh, uh, Art of Darkness in stock too. So um, come on down and get them. Both great beers, both, uh, both totally worth checking out. And um, come check out our beer tastings on every Friday night, uh, 5 to 7. Uh, we'll be here. We'll be tasting something different uh, um, every Friday night. So uh, come on down to Hops and Vines, and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers, right. guys. Cheers.